Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You might notice a little bit of a wardrobe change for myself and for the church. And that is because we have now entered a new season of Advent. Uh, this season we're going to focus especially on the light that is within each of us, that Christ has given us, that is um, uh, fanned into a flame by community, by, um, by the Spirit. So, um, this, yeah, so this season will be one where we get to sing Christmas songs and all that good stuff. So I'm glad that you're here. And I want to give a special thank you to Sharon Gallagher and Sharon Belleville and Patty Evans and Beth Evans and Kayla and Renee for helping to set up every beautiful thing that you see here, for going up into this terrible attic <laughs> to get all the Christmas decorations. And uh, uh, I'm just so grateful that we um, get to do this thing called church together. And to save Patty some time, the, the, the candles that you see floating in each of these wreaths, she found them on Amazon. So you, that's where you go. <laughs> All right. We also have special music that we're going to um, uh, settle into and let our spirits deepen with uh, this Advent season. So we're going to start with one of those songs. It's called... In silence we wait, and it's kind of, um, it's not a Tizay chant per se, but it's in the same spirit where you, the more you sing it, the more you repeat it, the more you settle down into your innermost being and um, pray those words. So I'm going to teach it for you, and the lyrics are on the screen for you. So I'm just going to stand by Sharon so I can better be with her. <laughs> I'll take it away. she thought about it, the more curious she became, until at length she decided to go and see for herself, though she was not as spry as she once had been. Just as the sun was beginning to set, she saw the little hut of the hermit across the next rise and thought to herself, well, even if it is a trick, at least soon I will be able to rest my weary bones. She got to the no door and was about to, lock, to knock, but it flew open. The hermit said, oh, I am so glad you're here. Oh, I know just why you have come. How can you possibly know why I have come? Come inside, come inside, and I will get the light for you. She went inside. He handed her a stone 
that seemed to glow, making the hut brighter than midday. How can such a thing be? And it's not even warm. Oh, it's a mystery. Oh, but to take good care of the light, maintained it well. Maintained it well? I don't know how to do that. It doesn't even have a wick. <laughs> oh, you will know in due time. But now I have pressing business that I must attend to. Make yourself comfortable. I must go. And with that, he went right out the door. She sank down into a chair with her amazing gift and thought that perhaps she should give the hermit something in exchange. She felt badly that she had nothing to give. She happened to see a pencil and a bit of paper. She wrote the words, thank you, put that on his table. And then she thought that she was a bit uncomfortable there in the hut without the hermit there. She decided to go on back home. She hadn't gone very far when she heard a young boy's voice calling, Sue boy, Sue boy, where are you? Sue boy, Sue boy. Whatever is the matter? Who are you looking for? Oh, oh, it's my dog, Sue boy. You have a light. Would you share your light with me? I've been looking all afternoon. He ran off and I can't find him. I've been looking everywhere and now it's too dark and I can't find him. Could you share your light with me? Share? Her light? Was such a thing possible? She looked at it and noticed that the stone was made up of clumps or sections. Perhaps there'd be a way to pull part of it off. But if she did, what would that do to her light? But the young boy was so frantic, hardly daring to breathe. She pulled a clump off and gave it to the young boy. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! <laughs> he rushed off in search of his dog. She noticed that the light was dimmer than it had been, but it still glowed brightly enough for her to see. She continued on her way. Around the next bend, she came upon a young woman sitting on a boulder, tears streaming down her face. Oh, are you injured? What is the matter? Oh, I have stayed on this side of the river too long. My home is on the other side, <coughs> and it is too dark now. I cannot find my way back home again. Well, perhaps I could share some of my light with you. Oh, would you? Would you do that for me? Yes. She broke another clump off, giving it to the young woman. Oh, thank you, thank you. She raced off to find her way home. The old woman noticed that the light now was definitely dimmer. But she could still see her way. She continued on until she reached a clearing. A woman rushed up to her. Oh, you have a light. Would you share it with me? My child is very ill. I am racing to go find the doctor in town. But in my haste, I forgot to even take a lantern with me. And now it's so dark, I can't see to get to town. Well, I ask you, how could she refuse? The old woman broke off another section of that light, gave it to the frantic mother, who rushed off. God bless you, God bless you. Now the old woman noticed that the light was definitely more dim. In fact, she had trouble seeing the path right in front of her. So she stumbled over a root. Before she could actually reach the ground, someone raised her elbow, bringing her up again. It was the hermit. He said to her, Oh, I see you figured out how to maintain the light. Oh, I have not done a very good job. I have been giving it away, and it's much dimmer now than it was. Exactly. You have done it perfectly. Now take a closer look at that light. She brought it up to her eyes. 
and noticed something miraculous. It looked as though the stone was regenerating, becoming a little bit bigger, the light a little bit brighter. Filled with amazement and hundreds of questions, she turned to the hermit, who had vanished. Hmm. Well, I'll be. And that's the story of the wondrous light. <laughs> We light candles as we prepare for the coming of Christ. More and more candles, more and more light. As we watch and wait for Jesus, the light of the world. <coughs> Holy Spirit, say with me. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, ignite us. us. We, we are as candles, candles waiting for your Spirit to set us aflame. We long for your light to dispel the night. Today, we light the first candle in hope recalling these words of scripture from Lamentations. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in the Lord. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. May your unfailing blood be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. this congregation picks up songs and sings them without the music being up there. You did a beautiful job on the first one. I was going to teach you this. I don't know that you need to be taught. Uh, this is Christ Be the Light. We will all sing the refrain. I will then sing the verse and we'll finish with the refrain again. So let's try the refrain just once. <coughs>
The scripture reading today is from Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds, we did not expect you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you, who work for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned because you hid yourself. We transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to hold, take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. May the hearing of these words be a blessing to those who heard them. I invite you to rise as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. Gospel of Mark, according to the 13th chapter. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather the elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. <clears throat> Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he might find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 You may be seated. <coughs> Now, as many of you know, I'm not only the pastor here, but I have another job as the chaplain at Peace Harbor here in town. And it's, it's an unpredictable job in a lot of ways. You have to take things as they arise. But there's one constant as a chaplain that I can depend on, and that is the pager. Hospitals that have staff chaplains must cover the hospital 24-7, which means that I must always be reachable if I'm on, on call, hence the pager it makes it easier to get a hold of me. So when I think back to those early days when I was first training as a chaplain in Minneapolis, I remember being so nervous when 5 o'clock hit and I could go home with my pager because it could happen at any moment. I could get a call. So I'd check the paper multiple times, especially if it seemed especially quiet. 
I would check to see if the battery was on, I would uh, clip it to my clothes, and if I forgot, I'd run to the room to double check it, race and see if I had missed anything. Luckily, time and experience taught me to calm down a bit. Not only because there really is no predicting when you're going to get a call. It could be in the middle of your dinner, it could be in the middle of your grocery shopping, it could be in the middle of your sleep. But staying vigilant in that way, in an anxious sort of way, wasn't a way to live. So I just couldn't do it anymore because it just was too stressful. This is what makes apocalyptic texts like this one in Mark so hard to take seriously. Who wants to stay alert for an untold period of time? Even if you know how to read the signs, you still have to keep your senses open and aware so that you know when that change is upon you. So if Jesus is asking us to stay on constant alert, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't want it. Because I've tried it, at least as a chaplain, and it's not for me. I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling this way. So if we're not to take this so, so literally, we're still invited to wrestle with this text and try to understand what Jesus might mean and come to terms with what a constant and steady alert actually means for us. Perhaps Jesus' final mini-parable shows us the way through. In the last few verses of the Gospel text, he gives this example of servants working together to keep a household in order. Everyone has a job, including the small task of watching the door. The only reason a house is ready to receive the master at any hour is because everyone is working together each responsible for a different task within the community, let's say, together staying vigilant and staying alert. Even for me as a chaplain, I know that whenever I hold the pager, I can count on the chaplain colleague that's working the ship before me to give me a call or at least send me an email about how the day went and let me know if there's a chance that I might get called in. I can also count on the charge nurse to do some good discernment as to whether or not a 3 a.m. call to the chaplain is worth their time or my time. And so now these days, as more of a seasoned chaplain, when it's time for my shift, I can cozy up at home and do what only I can do, which is to keep my phone on and charged, know where my badges, make sure that my car is in working order so that I can peel out at a moment's notice. I think the answer to any confusion to this text can be found in community. For we are not alone in our watching and our waiting. We can remain alert when we're in community. So as this Advent begins, let us take the light in which each of us have nurtured so tenderly in our private lives and let that light shine brightly in this place. This gathered light will illumine our way as we prepare for the coming of Christ. And the burden of our work here lightens here. It lightens in community because we see that the tension that is ours to bear is not one we bear alone. We share in it together. And though it doesn't always seem like it, the responsibility we have been given to tend to this light of Christ is a gift. So let us delight in God's gift here. The gift of light, the gift of community, the gift of faith. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Okay. And let us sing a familiar song, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And I invite you to stand as so you are able. <laughs>
tear it up. Sharon Gallagher. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different this season for our prayers. We're going to sing some more because we love to sing. Uh, so there, between every prayer petition, we will respond with a refrain that Sharon will teach you. It can be found in your green hymnal, um, 3141. It's titled Holy Darkness. So I'd encourage you to grab it because it's a little bit, um, it definitely is new. We've sung Christ Be Our Light before, I think in church, so feel free to grab for that in your pews. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer. As we anticipate the coming of Christ during this season, let us turn to our Creator God with our prayers and petitions. In this Advent, we are going to pray for the church, for the world, and all those in need. Between each of these petitions, we will sing the refrain from Holy Darkness. Let us pray. Actually, you teach first, and then we will pray. <laughs> of my daughter Philia and my best friend forever and guidance and conversion. Amen. For Philia. Mm -hmm. Troubles in Palestine, Israel, and Ukraine and 
Russia, for all who are living under threat of the fear of violence, and for all those living in anxiety. For Amen. For those in our community that recently lost their jobs this holiday season, particularly thinking of those employees of Friday. Mm -hmm. Amen. For the men and women in the military and those who wait for them at home, may they come home safe and sin. Amen. God in your mercy. fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses as we seek your light. We ask this in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and you can be seated, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> and let us confess our sins before God and our neighbor. We confess that we are not ready. We call on you to rend the heavens and come down. And yet, we aren't ready for you to rend our hearts and enter in. When it comes to meeting you face to face, we hesitate. We fear what you will find in us and among us. We are uncertain that we really want our lives to be turned upside down by the good news. We want the hope that comes with knowing you are coming to us. But we're not sure we're ready for the shock of that hope. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from our fear that we might joyfully live in the hope that shakes us up and turns us around to follow you. Hear the good news. God is the potter and we are the clay. We are the work of God's hand, and in the name of Jesus Christ, each of us is forgiven. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that sign of peace with one another. Say too, new is, is new. crucial. Yeah. So maybe not yeah. used, yeah. you know, socks or yeah. underwear <laughs> that you don't like anymore. <laughs> Brand new stuff or only the kindest hospitality for our guests here. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, and then two last announcements. Um, we have a couple members in our church that are part of the community chorus. So I believe there's concerts next weekend at on Saturday and Sunday at 3 p.m. So Stephen and Jim are part of it. Um, am I missing anyone else? It's, and then Jennifer. <laughs> it's at the Presbyterian Church. And it's at the Presbyterian Church. Um, so it's lots of fun. They, I just want to say, uh, I know Jim's been practicing a lot, and he's really impressed with, you know, the, the conductor and the music. And so I'm excited to go, because I've never been. And anyway, do you want to no, say anything? No, I'm just <laughs> 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 Wonderful. And there's lots of other things going on around the season, like Holly Jolly Follies were this weekend. Um, the, the band has a concert, I think on the, yeah. So keep, keep an eye on the community, on the fun ways to get involved. Empty Bowls is still going on Empty today. Empty Bowls, yes. Another food share. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, fun food yeah. Benefits. Oh, yes, I have a couple bowls myself. Yes. Where is that? Um, over at the, uh, event center, they have all sorts of ceramics and stuff. Um, and then our last announcement, of course, most important, we've got fellowship after church today, so stop by for some delicious food 
and drink, and the Schneebs are hosting today. So, okay. and then, I'd like to say congratulations to um, Kathy and Mike Bones' anniversaries tomorrow, oh, and today wow. is Peggy Hughes' birthday. Yay. Oh, oh birthday. Peggy! Yeah. benediction. Beloved of God, stay awake, stay alert, and pay attention to God at work all around you. And now go from this place, blessed to be bowled over by hope and shocked out of complacency to watch and wait and join in this wonderful work of bringing God's dream for all creation to life. So may it be so. Amen. And our Sunday song, I'm going to make you stand one more time. Get, we're getting our exercise in this morning. <laughs> I want to walk as a child of the light. 206 in your hymnal. <laughs>